There's an ugly makeshift ramp and we're backing right in. The first boat we've ever had on this lake. Generator produces the electricity, it goes through this voltage regulator box here in the back. Okay. And we can tweak it a little bit as we need, and then it goes out the front into the booms, shocks the fish, temporarily stuns them so we can pick them up and pick them up and uh, put them in here. So I'll have you dip everything that you see and stick it in the tank. Go ahead and step on the pedal. Ready to shock? Alright, we're shocking fish right now. There's one floating up. It's like a bluegill sunfish. Bluegill just come up. Right here you'll see a pretty nice size one, but he doesn't come all the way up and he gets away. There's another one coming up. Couple more coming up. Hey guys, Capper here, and a little bit of background on this pond. We bought this property a couple years ago and we built a nice home on it. And we added a second pond that is basically going to be attached to this. Uh, through the existing pond dam of this old pond. So we asked for some assistance in assessing whether we have to kill off this entire pond and start new or if it was in good condition the way it was to where we didn't have to kill it off and start brand new. So we asked the IDNR for assistance and it's kind of on a case-by-case -case basis if they have the manpower available but in our case they did so you're gonna see how this whole day went in the assessment of our what I call the old farm pond and our new one which is now full is attached to this one through a couple of channels no mr. big yet dang it there's one there's a little bass Small bass. It's a big bluegill. Big old bluegill didn't want to come all the way up. And another thing you'll notice as we're going around the pond, all these trees that are laid in the water. The bass up there. I did that by design um, to increase the fish cover. Not to mention we're not supposed to have trees on the dam, but these have been here for 20 plus years. So uh, that was by design laying some of these trees down for additional cover. And as you could see, we're, this is where all the fish are coming from, these trees that I laid down in the water.
So far the big ones have been eluding us. One big sucker. Okay, so this next clip you're going to see here, all of a sudden I'm going to look down, a, a nice sized bass jumps in the boat all on his own. So that's how it appears at my feet. Wow. That's a nice one. Woo! He just jumped right in the boat, huh? Yep. Well, I wanted to grow in the thing. You never know what that That was a good call. Yeah. Drone taken out by largemouth bass. So what he's referring to there is I had my drone remote control by my feet and I actually kicked it a couple times and he's like, you better put that down in the boat. And sure enough, that bass come in flopping all over and that remote is not very heavy. So he could have just as easily knocked that thing right in the water. Boy, that would have been a nice story, huh? Drone taken down by bass. So that was a good call, Kurt. Coming up, bunch of little ones. Ugh. That's a big panfish right there. And also, in case you're not aware, fish shocking doesn't hurt the fish, doesn't damage them or anything. It just stuns them so that we can capture them and then they all get released back into the pond. good let's go for some big one So now we're heading to some deep spots trying to see if we can't get a big one to come up, either a catfish or a bass. Kurt did get a glimpse of a very big white belly that just flashed, but the shock wasn't quite enough, but he wasn't sure if it was a big catfish or a bass, but he said it was quite large. Ooh, that was quick. Where's Mr. Big? Build it off 
I know you can't see because of the sun, I can't help that. But I'm gonna try and build ah, build it off to the right here just a little. Well, at least I got eight feet. I wasn't even sure if I got eight feet. Yeah. I can't even touch the bottom, so that's got to be probably ten almost. All right, time for the medical assessment. <laughs> I mean, this fish looks healthy. It's got a nice belly on it. Say for a pond, it looks good. These bluegill really look good. Yeah, those are nice quality fish. Okay. Yeah, eight and a half inch bluegill. Nice fish. That's a nice Friday fish fry right there. Yeah. Absolutely. And they all look that way. I mean, they're all good and healthy, and from what I could see, getting them dipped anyway. I think I did pretty good dipping for a rookie on the front. Yep, I would say you did a fine job. And you know, you've got different size classes, so that's good. You want to see that. You know, you don't want all one size species or one size of fish. So they all look good. And some little large mouth, so it's a uh, small large mouth, so you're getting reproduction, which is good. Now, like we talked before, it's not surprising to me to see that you have a significant number of fish this size. Your pond will have a good majority of these small to intermediate sized bass. And these are the ones that are putting a lot of predation on the blue, small bluegill, which is creating fish like that. Wow, yeah, so, that's I mean, nice. So if you don't have that predation from your bass, then in these bluegill out, the bluegill will tend to stunt and they'll end up being real small. Okay. So, I don't know, you know, you you gotta be the landowner and decide if you're happy or not with what, what you have and what your overall goals are. But, um, I see absolutely. This is what you'd expect in a well balanced pond. Okay. In my mind. So, you know, on the fact we saw, we didn't see any undesirable fish species. Oh, there's a big one. Some decent bass. Uh, decent bluegill. Yeah, I see he's good and healthy. This time of year, you know, they can be somewhat thin. Um, due to lack of forage and just the heat of the summer, they don't feed a lot. This fish looks real good. So. Nice. And 16 and a half. 16 and three quarters. pretty chunky though. Um, That's really good to see, huh? You said you and your wife fin clipped. Which, yeah. What fin did you clip? Them, you see them two fins up there? Here. Yeah. What we clipped the one or both of them underneath ones. Okay, those are pelvic. Yeah, them are the ones we clipped. You clip them both or just one? I don't remember if we did one or both. I, okay. I can't For remember. future reference, if you do clip fins like that, um, that's a good one to clip. These two, or sometimes, you well, know, I would do one of these two, and try to make a, a record of what what one you do. Okay. And um, that way you'll know from year to year which ones you do. Well, we did them all the same. We did all we okay. we did them all the same. I just can't remember if we did one or both. And you know, we read up on it. Right. So if, if it was recommended to do both, we did both. But I know we did that fin for everything. Okay. That underneath one. Been flopping a while. He's been sucking up some fresh oxygen, so they're they're ready to roll. Nice. 
nice bluegill. Mm -hmm. This one here is a really good one too. It's a nice fish right there. Nice male. Another eight and a half. Does it look good? See how the Ford does. This is a deep drop off. Piece of cake. Piece of cake. Good work.